This very brave elderly man refutes Islam in three minutes in front of all of these hostile Muslims in Speaker's Corner. Well, your religion tells you that you must do your salah, your work, your prayers, your zakah, your gift to charity, your Ramadan, your fasting, your hajj, your pilgrimage to Mecca, and your shahada. That's what your Quran tells you you must do. But let me ask you something. At the end of the day, when you fail to do what you should have done, at the end of your life, you can turn around to Allah and say, Oh Allah, I failed. And you can say, but Allah, you're merciful. And so at the end of the day, what is the point of all your washings, of all of your fastings, of all of your charitable gifts? What is the point of them? Nothing. It's works religion. And it is not by works of righteousness that we have done this, but by his mercy he saved us. And if your God, at the end of your life, can just wave a wand and say, you're forgiven, merciful, then your God is an unrighteous God. He's an unrighteous God. If he can wave a wand and say, you're forgiven, I'm merciful, then he's an unrighteous God because he can accept you on the basis of your works, which are unrighteous. Your works, all our works are unrighteous. None of us can offer to God a perfect righteousness. And if you believe in a perfectly holy God, then you know that this perfectly holy God must have a perfect righteousness. What can you bring less than that? Will God accept it of your hands? Of course not. Where do you find a perfect righteousness? In Jesus Christ. Praise hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. No, man, you're not saying it right, man. You must say hallelujah, man. You must say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. So, so, hallelujah, man. Where do we find a perfect righteousness? Through Jesus. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He alone is our righteousness. Yes. And this is the argument. People who don't know anything about the glory of Christ, they argue whether he's a prophet, whether he's the son of God. He I was declare a, to you, was a I don't argue with you. He was a prophet, man. He said, but I Lord, declare I to you, he's a prophet like myself. He's the son of God. And he was a king. He's the son of God. No, man. I he, declare to you, Jesus Christ is the son of God. And me too. In the gospel of John, Chapter I am a nine. Son of God. He healed a man blind and my sister from is a daughter birth. of God. And that man was blind from his birth. And Jesus Christ healed him. And when they found the man, they said to him, What do you think of the man? What do you think of Jesus? And they said, He's a prophet. He's a prophet. And then Jesus found him a little bit later on and he said, Do you believe on the Son of God? And he said, who is he, Lord, that I should believe on him? And he said, it's he that is speaking with you. And you've both seen him, and he's talking with you now. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Is man to receive worship? No. But the God man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, received worship. He received worship. So this just reminds me of the difference between Islam and Christianity once again. So whenever we look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 10, it tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk into them. So it's not saying that works are a bad thing because works are absolutely a good thing and they're evidence of your salvation that you're truly genuinely saved. However, those works don't get us into heaven because our works are as filthy rags as it says in the book of Isaiah. You can't wash a white cloth that has blood on it. No matter how much you wash it, it won't come off except through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because it's an external, it's a supernatural, it's a spiritual thing, something outside of this world. Jesus Christ was the lamb without blemish. Without Jesus Christ, we're nothing. Like Thomas says, my Lord and my God to Jesus Christ, with Christ, I have all that I need. I don't need anything else except for God Almighty. And it just lets you know how powerful God is, is because we're unworthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, but yet God still loved us while we were still yet sinners.
he forgave us for our sins. Whenever we look in the book of John 12, it lets us know that Mary, a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus. And if you guys don't know Hebrew tradition, she took that perfume that costed so much money, right? To anoint Jesus's feet 10 days before he got crucified on the cross. So in Jewish tradition, what they had to do is they had to take the feet of the lamb without blemish 10 days before the sacrifice for the forgiveness of all the people there in that city, that town, that village. And they would take a lamb and they would anoint their feet with anointing oil. And that's exactly what you see Mary doing with Jesus Christ in his feet before he got took into the slaughter for the forgiveness of our sins. And while we were yet sinners, God still loved us. Even while we were yet unworthy of his grace and forgiveness, he still loved us in our transgressions because that's the mighty God that we serve. We serve a forgiving, merciful, loving, unconditional loving God. This is nothing like the God of Islam. In Islam, show me one time where it says that God loves you unconditionally. You'll never find it because every single time you have to earn Allah's love in the Quran because it's a transactional love. But in the word of God, in the true Bible, in the true word of God, you see that God loves us even while we're yet unworthy of his love. No matter what we do, he still loves us and he forgives us like his own children. He adopted us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ by his sacrifice that he made on the cross. With his precious blood, we're unworthy of heaven, but because of Jesus Christ, we get to see another day of life. We have another chance of inheriting the kingdom of God every single day, every single minute, and every single millisecond that we're here on this earth. We get another chance of accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ and inheriting the kingdom of God with him forever and ever because that's how much he loves us. He's a mighty God. He has so much power, yet he has so much mercy. In his power, he shows his humility and his grace for us. While we were yet still sinners, he still loved us. And we also see in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And while Jesus Christ was a perfect man, and he was not deserving of any of the pain and suffering he did on the cross for us, he died on the cross willfully because he knew it was going to be the ultimate sacrifice for all of our sins because that's how greatly Jesus Christ loved us. And then whenever we look at 1 Peter 1 19, it just exemplifies God's love even more. It tells us, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins because it is an unconditional love that can't compare to any other religion. But God commanded us to love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So I just, I pray that anyone who watches this video, you see the true difference between Christianity and Islam because because Islam is used as a religion of war, as hatred and violence and terrorism. But when you see Christianity, it's love, it's peace, it's forgiveness, it's humility, it's selflessness and not selfishness. So I pray that this video was edifying for you guys and I hope that you guys can subscribe, like, and share so that more people can share and see the gospel of Jesus Christ.